Hi, I'm Old Norse Specialist Jackson Crawford. This is another installment in my Old Norse Lessons series. And today, a little bit like last time, just a short installment about one particular class of nouns in this particular instance. So I want to look at the consonant stems. You've already actually learned one of these, mother, uh, but there are four other common ones. And these nouns, masculine or feminine, there's not neuters, have I mutation in the nominative and accusative plural, but not in the genitive and dative plural like your R stem family words like father. So let's look at what these are. So like I said, there's only four others that are particularly common. So let's look at what those are and then give you some examples of uh, other ones work similarly. So a masculine one is fotr, foot. By the way, in Old Norse, foot also often means the entire leg, just like hond, hand, often also means the entire arm. So here we got fotr, fot, fotar, foti. So we have uh, I mutation in the dative singular, but not elsewhere. And uh, in spite of a pretty normal looking masculine nominative and accusative singular, we have more like a lot of I stems or U stems, the R gender singular ending. Then in the nominative and accusative plural, we have Föter with I mutation. But then the I mutation is gone when we add the typical all nouns, genitive and dative plural endings, A and U. So another, uh, incidentally, body part that starts with F that works the exact same way is finger, but note that finger does keep its R through the entire paradigm. You add all the endings to the R because it's actually part of the root, which you can kind of tell because of course the English word is finger with an R at the end, and that means that the R is part of the root and not just part of the, and not just the masculine nominative singular ending in Old Norse. So what would finger be? What would the inflection of it be? Pause if you need to think about it keeping in mind that you add the endings to the R instead of taking the R away. Well here you would have finger, finger, fingrar, fingri, because there's no I mutation of I, it's already a front vowel. Finger, finger, fingra, fingru. Alright. Let's look at another masculine. This is uh, the other pretty common masculine one. Winter, which in Old Norse is vetter. This is another noun where the R is actually part of the root, so our endings will be added to it instead of taking the R away and then adding the uh, endings to what's what's left. So here we got vetr, vetr, vetrar, vetri. No I mutation of E because it's already a front vowel. Vetr, vetr, vetra, vetru. Not so bad, right? All right. Now there's a few more feminine examples of this. Uh, let me give you, in the usual way, a word from my friends and partners at Grim Frost. I'll come back and we'll look at some of these. So there seems to be a weird propensity for body parts to be part of this constant sim class. So here's hand, a feminine. We have hond, hond, handar, hendi. Remember that the actual root vowel is a, the o caudata that you get in the nominative and accusative singular is because of a u that used to be there in the nominative and accusative of um, most feminine nouns. But since there's no u, in the genitive singular or dative singular, we revert back to the base vowel a, ah, but then we i umlaut that to e in the dative singular. So in a like way, in the nominative and accusative plural, we have hender, hender, and then handa, hondum, with again, u mutation in the dative plural as you always expect. A uh, similar feminine, although it can be a little different, is night. So this is typically in Old Icelandic, which is what most of our sources are in. Note. Note, natter, 
or notar. So we sometimes have this iumlata genitive singular on this word. A little bit weird, but then sometimes we get the form that we'd actually kind of expect. Uh, and I'll come back to what the vowel is there in a moment. And then plural, natar, natar, nota, notum. Now it may look like this vowel is all over the place and it really kind of is. The problem is that this was a nasalized long o caudata once and Old Norse is kind of inconsistent about whether that becomes a long o as you'd actually expect laukgesetlich as they say in historical linguistics or whether it gets re-analogized to the long a that's elsewhere in the paradigm. So we typically see the long a in notar if that's what the generative singular is and of course the ash that we see in the nominative and accusative plural is the i mutation of long a not of long o. I can't ever remember seeing nutter which would be the i mutation of long o rather than of long a. But you do then sometimes also see nominative accusative not in long a t t and uh, that's also more common on the continent. So night is one to kind of watch out for. The long O's and long A's will kind of trade off. You'll see forms both, but um, where this I mutation, as far as I can recall, you'll always see it with ash, not with the long O slash. Okay, other feminines that work similar ways. Um, see if you can guess the correct forms for boke, book. Well, you ought to get boke, boke. Genitive singular, like night, can wander between bukr. Here we actually do have the I mutation of long o, or bokar. Dative, boke. We do not, other than in hand, typically see the dative singular I mutated in feminine consonant sim nouns. And then plural, bukr, bukr, boka, bokum, with the I mutation reversed in genitive and dative plural. Try another one. How about moose, which means mouse, because Old Norse has not undergone the great vowel shift like some dialects. Scots. What would you get for feminine constant sim moose, meaning mouse? Well, there you'd expect moose. Moose. Genitive singular of this one is typically moosar, and then dative singular moose. Nominative and accusative plural is mis. What's happened there is we've got the I mutation of long U to long Y, but then the S at the end of the root is going to make the R that we would add there, or the Z in earlier protonors, assimilate to the S, and so it becomes just SS instead of SR. So mis, mis, and then genitive and dative plural, musa, musum. All right. Uh, another couple that are worth mentioning is, um, uh, although we've looked at the really common four, which are the ones you really ought to commit to memory, that's foot, foter, winter, vetter, hand, hond, and book, boak. There's also nail, uh, like fingernail. That's a masculine. Typically we see noggle, noggle, noggles, noggly. So uh, with a more typical masculine endings in the genitive and dative singular than you see in foter or finger. And then plural, negle, negle, so no ending, just I mutation, nagla, noglum. It's a little weird, but for obvious reasons, it's not an incredibly common word. People don't talk about their nails very much. There's also toe. This is feminine. Excuse me. I, I was looking at finger and I, I, I guess I thought of the other T anatomical word that's short. It's tooth, ton. So this is feminine, ton, ton, tanar, ton, and then plural is typically tenor, but it can also be tether because there's an Old Norse sound change that makes n n r eth r. That's why it's mother, not moner. But also by analogy, sometimes you'll see it become tenor again because they remember that there's two ends in the root. So tenor, tether, tenor, tether, and then tana, tonu. All right, so this is a, a weird class. Again, there's only four nouns, which I pointed out are particularly common. Foter, Vetter, Hund, Boke. But it's worth being aware of these because uh, 
uh, if you do encounter them, um, you might have to look up, you know, a non-I mutated form, depending on if you came across a plural or a dative, something like that. You have to remember that, uh, for example, if you run across, you know, Hendi, that what you might need to look up is the root hand or even hond because it's a feminine and a ah gets mutated in the nominative singular. I'll give you a couple more exercises and uh, words to work on and then some translation exercises with some relevant vocabulary in them. And uh, till next time, I hope you'll uh, do okay with your own Old Norse studies. And of course, um, I was pretty happy with how the Old Norse Grammar Workshop went on um, Zoom that we did for Patreon supporters in April. Hope to make that roughly a monthly event. I think that'll be good for Old Norse learners. Uh, it was nice for me to be able to see where people are, answer some great questions and that sort of thing. Well, for now, from a very special spot in beautiful Colorado, I'm wishing you all the best.